our time has come. My own time has come. Father, we thank you tonight and bless your name. Thank you because this day in particular is the day of your power. Power to save, power to heal, power to deliver, power to bring solution to every problem in every life. Here at the Alpha location, Lord, work miracles in the lives of your people. All over the world, in every nation, Lord, touch everyone and work wonders, signs in every life in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. We know it is done. We will all experience your power in Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. God bless you. You can see now. This uh, GCK, October 2024, we're declaring, we're upholding, we're expressing, and saying that this will be the period, the time, the moment, the day of His power. The Lord will send forth His power. He will heal. Give me a good and no go amen. He will save. He will deliver. You will not miss your miracle. You will not miss your sign and wonder in Jesus' name. As we begin today, we're looking at Psalm 110. We're looking at verse 3. Psalm 110. Reading from verse 3, it says, Thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power. Look at that there, the day of thy power. This is the day of his power. And it says, the people who come to the Lord, the people who hear about the Lord, it says, thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power and then it says in the beauties of holiness in from the womb of the morning that word womb of the morning from the dawn of the day from the beginning of the day and throughout our lives from today there will be that manifestation of the power of god in every life in Jesus name and then it says thou hast the dew of thy youth he gives us the dew he gives us the refreshing of youth in our lives you will become young again if now sickness brought you down the strength of the Lord, the power of the Lord will lift you up in Jesus' name. Yeah. Tonight, we're beginning with the message, divine human willingness on the day of his power. Look at that, divine willingness. Human willingness will bring the two together, the divine human willingness in the day of his power. Already he has told us at the beginning of that verse, it says, Thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power. There are three parts of the message. Number one, the divine will to save the submissive penitent as you come to the Lord and you say, Lord, I surrender my heart, my life, my future, everything I surrender unto you. He tells us there is the divine will to save you, to rescue you, to deliver you, to set you free at any area you are bound in your life tonight. You are delivered in Jesus' name. Yes. Number two. Number two is our decisive willingness to surrender under his supernatural power. There is the supernatural power 
that cannot fail, that will not fail, and that power is here tonight. And the power is here tonight for you, for me, for my family, for my children, for my relatives. That power is here tonight, and you have the decisive willingness. You decide, you're willing that today, because this is the power that can set you free, you willingly surrender under a supernatural power. We're looking at number three. Number three is the decreed wonders and signs of sure performance. The performance of the Lord is sure tonight. Performance your life sure tonight. Every promise he gives us, the promise of salvation, the promise of healing, the promise of deliverance, the promise of solution to that problem you have carried for so long, that performance is here for you tonight. Yeah. Looks like I can see you there, performance coming into your life. Yeah. Power will run after you. Yeah. Performance will run after you. Yeah. Miracle. Somebody help me shout, miracle. Yeah. Shout the kind of miracle you want tonight. Yeah. It is coming in Jesus' name. Yeah. That's a sure, certain, undeniable performance in your life tonight because it's like a decree. The decreed wonders and signs of sure performance let's look at number one number one is the divine will to save the submissive penitent let me explain the word penitent and the word penitent means the repentant one the one that is saying i am sorry for my past i am sorry for my present i am sorry for my actions i am sorry for the events that have allowed in my life i now want to have something new you want something new i said you want something new the person is saying i reject the old i now embrace the new I abandon the old and I come my life from this hour will become a new life. Your life from this hour will become a new life, a new outlook, a new appearance and a new disposition, ability in your life in Jesus name. The divine will to save to save the submissive penitent. And we know the penitent, now that's the repentant. That's the person that's saying, I'm sorry for the past. I want a new life, a new future. Submissive, you submit unto him. Like a patient submits to the doctor. When the doctor wants to, uh, you know, perform operation, uh, the, you know, the patient totally submits, he says, all is in your hand, doctor. And you say now, all is in the hand of the Almighty God. All is in the hand of your Savior, of your Redeemer. Whatever He wants to accomplish in your life, tonight He will accomplish. Yeah. And He will turn you to become a totally brand new person in Jesus' name. God has that will. And whatever He wills, Nothing can stop him. The divine will to save the submissive penitent. As we look at uh, that Psalm 110, oh, one, oh, that is 1 and 10, verse 3 again, it says, Thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power. Why would we be willing? Because God Himself is willing. He is willing to rescue us, we are willing to be rescued. He is willing to forgive, we are willing to be forgiven. He is willing to set free, we are willing to be set free. He is willing, at least 
you know he created you and he did not create you for a bad life an evil life a sinful life a mediocre life he created you for a life that will fly above like an eagle and even though things are down is still willing to get you up you will come up because now he's willing to save hey, look look at this hebrews chapter 7 reading from verse 25 hebrews chapter 7 we're looking at verse 25 wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost if you're gone to the uttermost in sinfulness he is able to go to the uttermost in your salvation he's able to go to the very extreme no matter where you are he'll get you up from that place somebody fell into the well and he's falling to the uttermost deep well it's right at the bottom you may not be able to save yourself but God is able your friend may not be able to save you but he is able and the people around you may because you've gone so far you've gone to the death of that well but the hand of the almighty God is long enough tonight he'll pick you from the uttermost where you have been I didn't hear a good amen there and then he will save you to the uttermost he will save you now and tomorrow you are still saved next week you are still saved until the end of your life to the uttermost you are saved in jesus name it says wherefore he god wherefore he the almighty wherefore he that cannot fail is able is able and there are two words there is a word able that the word willing you see there are people they're willing but they are not able other people they are able they are not willing in the case of the almighty god what he is able to do he is willing to do he is able to save is willing to save is able to heal is willing to heal he is able to deliver and is willing to deliver able and willing willing and able and you have the willingness of god tonight you have the ability of god tonight it will set you free yeah. but remember for the submissive penitent for the one that says lord I come. I can't help myself. I can't do this by myself. I submit to your grace. I submit to your calling. I submit to your power. I submit to that divine ability, the divine will, the divine ability to save the submissive penitent. It will do it for you today. And it says, All that come to God by him you come to god and you come through jesus christ because jesus is the only way jesus is the only savior jesus is the only one that can rescue you he'll rescue you tonight in jesus name and then it says seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them is ever living and is making intercession for you right now it's making intercession for me i said it's making intercession for me what are you it's making intercession for me that intercession of christ for you tonight that you'll be saved that you'll be restored from backsliding that you'll be healed the intercession of christ is ready answered by heaven on your behalf in jesus name yeah. and what you see tonight is the performance of that promise the performance of that willingness of the almighty god look at second peter chapter 3 and we're looking at verse 9 in second peter chapter 3 verse 9 it says the lord is not slack concerning his promise 
Well, we have a lot of promises, and the Lord says, God is not slack concerning his promise. There are some promises in the future that Christ said, I am coming again. Lord, why have you not come? Have you forgotten your promise that you are coming? Are you slack in your promise that you are coming? No, he is not slack concerning his promise of coming. But he is long-suffering toward us. It's because of his mercy, of his love. He doesn't just want to come. And your name is not in the book of life yet. He doesn't want to come. And then you're still swimming in sin and drowning in sin. He is not slack. He's waiting for you. He's saying you must be saved. You will be saved. Amen. You must be forgiven. You will be forgiven. Your life must come, must become different. You must be enlisted and reaching in the book of life. That's why he's still waiting. God is not slack. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise as some men count slackness. But he is long suffering towards world. To you, word, not willing that any should perish. Is he willing that I perish? Is he willing that you perish? His will is for you to be saved. He doesn't want you to perish. He wants you to have forgiveness, freedom, redemption. He wants your name to be in the book of life. He doesn't want you to go to hell and you will not go to hell. Yeah. He doesn't want me to go to hell, and I will not go to hell. Yeah. I say that. I will not go to hell. God is not willing, God is not happy that any creature of his creation, God is not willing that anyone he created to be on earth and to enjoy life, enjoy eternal life, have everlasting life he is not willing that such a man such a woman such a boy such a girl should go to hell and perish and suffer forever and ever i am not willing to perish you are not willing to perish god is not willing that any of us should perish we will be saved in jesus name yeah. you will be saved in Jesus' name. Look at the conclusion of that verse. But he doesn't want any to perish, but that all should come to repentance. All? How many people? How many people should be saved? All of us who are here, how many of us should be saved? Are you part of that all? Welcome to the salvation of the Lord tonight. He will save you. He will forgive you. He will write your name in the book of life. That the divine will to save the submissive penitent. I come to number two here. Number two, we're looking at our decisive willingness to surrender under his supernatural power. We're looking at our own willingness. You will be willing. I will be willing. And look at Isaiah chapter 1. And we're reading here from verse 16. This is what shows we're willing. Are you willing to be clean? Yes, I'm willing. Go wash. Are you willing? To have life, yes. Then forsake the ways of death. You see, willingness is not just the word of the mouth. Willingness is courage out in action. That's why it says in Isaiah chapter 1 verse 16. It says, wash you and make you clean. Wash you and make you clean. Now, if you told somebody, wash you and make you clean, and then he begins to rub his body with his bare hand. 
You say, what are you doing? You told me now to be washed and to be made clean. So that's why I'm doing that. No, you have to get some water so that it is that water that will help you and lead you to being clean. And when it says wash you and be clean in the blood of Jesus that washes us and cleanses us, what can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. So the Lord commands you. He says, wash you and make you clean the fountain of the blood that Jesus shed for your cleansing, for your forgiveness is still available. And as you believe in that cleansing blood of the Lamb tonight, you'll be clean. I will be clean. Then it says, put away the evil of your doings. Put away the evil of your doings. Somebody wants to be clean in the natural, in the physical. And then he sees the gutter. And he sees, uh, you know, the water in the gutter, dirty water. And then he lies down there. If you're going to be clean, you put that off. The things that make your body dirty. The things that make your brain deranged. The thing that makes your soul to go astray. The things that bring condemnation to you. You have put, put all that away. And it is when you do that, you have the willingness, decisive willingness, to surrender under his supernatural power. That's what you do tonight. I say that's what you do tonight. Say, I will do that tonight. God bless you and affirm that in your life in Jesus' name. And then it says that we put away all those things and we cease to do evil. Why? Because the devil and evil are together. When you spell devil, there is a D and then there is evil. And that D is danger. If you walk with the devil, if you live for the devil, if you kind of communicate with the devil, if you answer the devil and do what the devil wants you to do, which is evil, there is danger and the Lord doesn't want any danger in your life any death premature death in your life that's why tonight it says cease to do evil look at verse 17 in verse 17 it tells us here it says learn to do well learn to do well what do I learn? You know, you've been praying in the name of an idol. And you want to be saved. And look at your Savior that died for you on the cross of Calvary. Learn to do well. Learn to talk to Christ. Learn to talk about Jesus. Learn to say, idol cannot save me. Learn that. Learn to say, all the evil and the practices of my hand cannot save me. But Jesus will save thou shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Learn that, that there's only one name given under heaven. Learn that, whereby we must be saved in the name of Jesus. Learn that, learn that the power of the blood of Christ and his sacrifice can make you whole. Learn that and learn now to follow Christ. When you follow Christ, you do well. Learn to do well. When you put your feet where he put his feet, and when you say that what he would have said, and you do what he would have done, you learn to do well. Seek justice. Seek judgment. Relieve the oppressed and judge the fatherless. Plead for the widows. In your saying that you know we have been cruel before. Who can say I've never been cruel to anybody. I've never been cruel to even animals. I've never been cruel to younger people. We have been cruel. But now it says we relieve 
the oppressed. We go the opposite direction. You know, some of you when were young, or maybe even as uh, some of us were old, you see somebody running, and then he stumbles and falls, and maybe he breaks his bone. Maybe the first thing some people is to laugh. Uh, look at him. Uh, we said so. He's uh, running too much. He's running too fast. Look at what happened to him now. Maybe we gossip and we talk about other people when they have some misfortune in their lives. But now we turn around. We say we're willing to have a new life. New life will come to you. And then in verse 18, he says, Come now and let us reason together, says the Lord. Who am I? Who are you? Who are we? That the Almighty God, the creator of the heavens and the earth, will come us, will call us and say, Come now, let's talk together. He didn't just stay on the judgment seat and he says, let him die let him perish he says no he invites everyone look at the privilege the lord is giving you and giving me and giving all of us look at that prodigal son look at that prodigal daughter he's gone to the far country he's wasted all his resources and he said of the almighty father in heaven saying good for him good for her he thought he was wise he thought he wanted to be independent he says no prodigal son prodigal daughter come let us reason together is it better for you now in that path of independence is it okay for you now as everything is wasted your brain wasted your energy wasted your life wasted drunkenness has totally destroyed you you thought you are being an independent guy an independent girl look at this now god is saying i don't want you to perish i should suffer I pity you, come and come now. God is so kind. I said God is so good. And God is good to you. I said God is good to me. That's why he says, come now. Don't waste time. The devil is running faster than you can see him. And he wants to come and destroy your life there before he comes and destroys you completely. Come now and let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. I thought somebody would say amen to that. Says, when he says, come now, don't say, I cannot come. I'm too dirty. I'm too vile. I'm too bad. How can I come? If I come, God will see that I am so dirty and my sins are so deep. He says, even though your sins be as scarlet, he will so wash you and cleanse you, you will be as white as snow. That's good, but you can say a better amen. It says, though they are red like crimson, though they are black like shackle, it says, they shall be as wool. And that's why it says, it says, come now and let us reason together. If I come, what will he do? Will he club my head and kill me and said, you should not live again, you are too bad? He says, no, he will forgive your sin. He will cleanse your sin. He will purge your sin. Christ died for you already on the cross of Calvary. And the goodness of the Lord and the favor of the Lord will be upon your life tonight in Jesus' name. Look at verse 19. Verse 19, it says, if he be willing, look at that. He said, on my side, on the side of God, I'm willing to forgive. But if you be willing, on the side of God, is able and is willing to reverse every negative sin in your life. But you have to be willing, the divine human willingness have to be joined together on the side of God, willing to save. You must be willing to be saved on the side of God, is willing to redeem. But you must have the willingness that He will redeem you. And tonight, as you are willing, He will redeem you. 
they will save your life. All the sins you ever committed in your life, the Lord will forgive. And the Lord will make your life to shine again. I'm talking to somebody there. You will shine, you will shine, you will shine again. Only that you are willing. It says, if ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. There's much good in this land. There's much good in your land where you are here. And all the other people will not eat everything and then you go penniless, you go hungry, you go thirsty, you go like you know, a slave and a kind of poor, poor, poor person here on earth. Goodness is waiting for you. Grace is waiting for you. Because if ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. The Lord will save you. The Lord will heal you. The Lord will bring you up from the dungeon where you are. He lifts you up in Jesus' name. To say yes, I'm willing, yes, I'm willing. What am I to do? Proverbs chapter 23. We're reading there from verse 26. In Proverbs chapter 23. Reading from verse 26. It says, my son, give me your heart. Already God has given us a son. It says now, look at what I've given you. My very heart my own son the most important in heaven on earth for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever 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 believeth in him will not perish that's me i said that's me i said that's me look at me very well that's me amen that's you and all you have to do my son give me thine heart and let thine eyes observe my ways as you come to the lord the lord will turn everything around for the better in your life in jesus name when i said when Amen is done in your life in Jesus' name. We're coming to number three here. Look at number three. We're looking at the decreed wonders and signs of sure performance. There's performance tonight. Performance of healing tonight. Performance of wonder signs tonight. Performance of the goodness of God tonight in your life. In my life, miracles tonight in your life, deliverance tonight in your life, the goodness of heaven tonight in your life in Jesus' name. And we're coming to this, and this is the decreed wonders and signs of sure performance. We're looking at Job chapter 22, and I'm reading from verse 21. Job. Chapter 22, verse 21, it says, Acquaint now thyself with him. That is where God become acquainted with God. We have been acquainted with people. We have been acquainted, even some people are so acquainted with Satan. They know his name, they know his nature, they run his errands for him. They're so, they're so acquainted with evil. But he says now, today, being the day of his power and the day of his performance, acquaint now thyself with him and be at peace. Peace has come. Turbulence in the heart is going right now. Confusion in the heart, depression in your life, depression is going away tonight in Jesus' name. Acquaint yourself with him and be at peace thereby. Good shall come unto thee. Good shall come unto me. Grace shall come unto me. God 
His goodness shall come unto me. Evil will leave you. Sin will leave you. Sickness will leave you. Goodness shall come unto thee. Look at verse 22. In verse 22, it says, Receive, I pray thee, the law from his mouth. Everything is telling us in his word. He says, Receive that. It's for your good. It's for your transformation. It's for the grace of God to enter into your life. So you receive. He says, I pray thee. I plead with you. I'm begging of you. Receive the law, the word from his mouth and lay up his word in thine heart. The word in your heart that God is able, lay that in your heart. That God is willing, lay that in your heart. That God is powerful, lay that in your heart. That God is gracious, lay that in your heart. That God will do what only he can do. Lay that in your heart. And it says, as you do that, look at uh, verse 23. It says, if iniquity be in thine heart. It says, if you return to the Almighty. If you return to the Almighty. I will return. I will return. You know, all the people that are with the Almighty, the Almighty power of the Lord will be walking in their lives. And we've gone so far that we all have seen and come short of the glory of God. But now I return. The prodigal son, the prodigal daughter, that the backslider, the one who was saved and he knew the joy of salvation and he knew the ability of God to keep us above the stormy waters of sinfulness in life, but they have gone back. It says now we return. Tonight you return. And if thou return to the Almighty, thou shalt be built up. The Lord will build your life again. He'll build your family again. He'll build your business again. Every good thing that you have lost, He'll bring it up and build it up in your life again in Jesus' name. And then it says, you put iniquity far away from thy tabernacle. You understand that? Iniquity, that's transgression, transgression, that's sin, sin, that's disobedience, disobedience, that's lawlessness. It says we put all those things, iniquity, far away. How far? So far. You cannot grab it again. How far? So far, like the depth of the sea. How far? As far as you want God to remove your sin away from you. And the east is far from the west. And the west is far from the east. So you put the sin away. I don't want to see it again. Put it away. I don't want to touch it again. Put it far away. You don't want any, to do anything with it anymore. It says you put sin, iniquity, transgression, evil doing, put that far away from thy tabernacle. Look at verse 24. In verse 24, it says, Then shall that lay up gold as dust. You will be prospered again. You will be rich again. It will satisfy your hunger. It will satisfy your thirst. It will supply all the needs of your life. You will not remain a beggar. I will not be a beggar. You will have enough to eat and to spare and to give other people. You become a dignified person because it will so provide for you. Look at the next verse in verse 25. It says, Yea, yes, truly, surely, certainly. That's what it means when it says, Yea, it means yes, it means truly, it means surely. 
It means certainly, it is certain in your life, you are going to be saved tonight. It is certain in your life, you are going to be delivered tonight. Yea, the Almighty shall be thy defense. Amen. Amen. The Almighty will defend you. Amen. Anybody as powerful as the Almighty? Anywhere here? No. No matter how powerful they are, no matter how high they are, the Almighty is higher than the highest. Yeah. And the highest will be your defense. And then it says, and thou shalt have plenty of silver. Yeah. Uh, some people say no. Yeah. You will have. Yeah. You will have. I will have, she will have, he will have. Look at all those children of Israel in the wilderness. They had enough water. Even though all they saw was a rock. But in that rock, dry rock, the rod, the cross will smite that rock. You have enough to, to drink, enough to eat. And enough to live by in Jesus' name. In verse 26, it tells us, it says, For then thou shalt have that delight in the Almighty, and shall lift up thy face unto God. Then in verse 27, in verse 27, thou shalt make thy prayer unto him, and he shall hear thee. He will answer you. He will answer me. Everyone asking for forgiveness will have forgiveness. Everyone asking for salvation will have salvation. Everyone asking for healing will have healing. Everyone having for, uh, asking for deliverance will have deliverance. I will have what I ask tonight. I will receive what he gives tonight. Uh, look at verse 28. In verse 28, thou shalt also decree a sin, and it shall be established unto thee. Decree. Thou shalt decree a sin, and it shall be established unto thee. Amen. You know, in Daniel chapter 6, reading from verse 8, look at what they said about a decree. The decree of the Medes and the Persians. It says, Now, O king, establish the decree and sign the writing that it be not changed. It says, according to the law of the Medes and the Persians, which cannot change, which altereth not. The law of the Medes and the Persians becomes decree. And once it is given out, it cannot be changed. That's what they reminded the king of when Daniel was thrown into the den of uh, was to be thrown to the den of the lion. And the king was trying so that it will not be done. Then they came to him. In verse 15, they said, King, remember that the decree of the Medes and the Persians cannot be altered. Why am I telling you that? There is a higher decree. I said there's a higher decree. The decree not of the Medes, of the Messiah. The decree not of the Persians, but of the Prince. The decree of the Messiah and the Prince cannot be altered. The decree of Jesus in your life. I died for you. You're supposed to be saved, to be forgiven. I bought the stripes for you. And by stripes, we are healed. That's the decree of the Messiah and the Prince. And now the decree of the minister and the preacher. 
I decree upon your life that tonight you are saved. I decree, they decree, you know, medics, patients, they have their own decree. And they say their decree, although it's an evil decree to throw a man into the lion's den, they said that decree cannot be altered. But thank God for a better decree for you. The decree of the Messiah and the Prince of Peace will not be changed in your life. Yeah. And the decree of the minister and the preacher here tonight, when that decree comes to you that you are saved, it cannot be changed. Yeah. You are healed, it cannot be changed. Yeah. It is coming right now yeah. upon your life, yeah. upon my life. A decree for salvation, a decree for healing, a decree for deliverance, a decree for the new life. Thou shalt also decree a thing and it shall be established for you. For me. Where is he? It's done tonight. It's bowed and eyes closed. It's bowed. And I is close. This day is the day of his power. He has the will to save. You have the willingness to surrender. And then there are the decreed wonders and signs for everyone because there's a sure performance here tonight. It's about eyes closed. Remember, if you're willing, you'll have what the Lord has provided even now peace of mind joy of salvation and forgiveness from all sins all the past will be forgotten in your life will start for you tonight you want that change you want that transformation you want that forgiveness you want that redemption you want that salvation wherever you are Raise up that hand. Amen. Wonderful. Wonderful. Raise up that hand. Don't wait. Don't delay. Because the Lord wants you to have the forgiveness right now. He's done everything for you to be forgiven, for you to be saved. Just, just raise up the hand. God bless you there. God bless you there. Thank you. God bless you there. And then you're raising up your hand. Please stand up. And say, yes, I'm here. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Forgiveness has come. I say forgiveness has come. The joy of salvation has come. The grace of God that brings salvation now is appearing to you, is coming to you. Raise up your hand and stand up. In uh, wherever you are online, wherever you are, any nation of the world, any congregation in any country, that salvation is yours today. That forgiveness is yours today. And once it is done, it's able to save to the uttermost. For the rest of your life, you'll keep on enjoying this forgiveness, freedom, redemption, and salvation. Keep on standing up. We are praying together. Now remember, the decree of the Messiah and the Prince of Peace cannot be altered, cannot be reversed. And the decree of the minister and the preacher cannot be reversed in your life. It has come. It will stay. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, thank you for your love. Thank you for this day, the day of your power. The day of your pardon and the day of performance. Lord, I pray, forgive everyone asking for forgiveness in Jesus' name. Amen. Save everyone that needs salvation and they are asking now in Jesus' name. Amen. Blot out their sin. Forgive every evil thing they ever did. Let there be no remembrance of any of those bad things anymore against their lives in Jesus' name. Amen. Salvation for everyone. Restoration for the backslider. Peace of mind to everyone that receives Christ as the Prince of Peace in their lives right now. Lord, we believe it is done. We believe 
your people are saved. We believe that the forgiveness is real and definite right now. The grace to go out and live a better life. Life in the Lord. Grant unto them in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Say thank you, Lord. It is done. Say it is done. In Jesus' name, we pray. Yeah. Another amen. Yeah. A special Enogo amen. Yeah. God bless you. Keep on standing. Uh, members of the choir, ushers, counselor, they'll be there to help us now and get the names down. Please don't sit down until our counselors, members of the choir, ushers, and the people who have been prepared to uh, get all this done. Until they get to you and you do everything, please do sit down. We're calling on our state overseer to help us get through all this. And then we come back. Your healing, deliverance is decreed tonight. Yeah. That's that. Why is the evening going down? Those who gave their life to Christ, please keep standing. All counselors, please get to them and give them the card, fill their name properly. And not only that, after that, you give them the Converse package that contains the letter from the GS as well as the book. Please let every Cancel up, please get to the people. And if they have not gotten to you, please indicate. Cancel us, please, everywhere. Get to them now. Write their names properly. And if you can feel, you can be able to write, take the card from them, feel it properly, and then. Give it back to them. Your name, your address, your telephone number. Make sure it's complete. Make sure everything is correctly done. And those who are online, you gave your life to Christ online, you see in your device the link. Click on it and fill the form and submit from, you know, just submit it online. Those who have not been attended to, cancel us, please locate them where they are. And once you are through with them, then give them the Converse package. After that, they have their seat you Get by the card and make sure everything is correctly filled. And let's remember that the crusade continues tonight. Is all the foundation. We continue tomorrow, 5 p.m. here at Obara Square. And also the ministers' conference. Ministers, professionals, business executive conference. It's going to be at event center with all Christian workers of all denominations at Amadio event center near the Eba Nocturnal. Be there tomorrow by 8 a.m. 8 a.m. The impact comes up on Saturday 26 here at Obara Square Impact Academy for Youth from glory to glory by 8 a.m. Those who have not been reached, you gave your life to Christ and cancerous have not come to you, please indicate. Cancerous, look at those who are standing. And I turn to them. To my left, I see a young man over there standing. Please get to them quickly. 
fill the form properly and then receive it from them and give them the converse package that will help them to grow in their Christian faith. The book there, read. Study it. It will help your faith to increase. If cancerous have not come to you, please indicate. Please get to them. Nobody should be left out. And the people at the cover stand, let's ensure that they are attended to. The people at the language section, let's ensure that they are attended to. Very quickly, cancel us. And after counseling, don't return to your seats. Remain with the people. Because tonight is going to be miracle everywhere. Cancel us, please. Let me check up. To my left, over there, if you are true, cancel us. Supervisors, if you are true, can you wave your hands or the flag it's okay please when you are through where you are counseling join the others where we see our people to attend to let's be fast please write legibly possibly with capital letter and let the address be clearly written so that we'll be able to get to them after this time. And once you are through, submit the cards to the supervisors. And supervisors, make sure you take the card to where it's going to be sorted out. Are we true towards the left hand side? We are true. Okay, I see. Are we true at the middle? Please, if you are true, let me see. At the middle. Supervisors, please, if you are true, indicate by the wave of the flag or your hand. Over here, okay, you are true over here. Please get to the back, join the others at the back and make sure. That everyone is captured. At the language section, have they all been attended to? And if you are true, please be praying, calling upon God that tonight I will not go without a miracle. Those in the front, I, can, I think you are true. But at the far back, are we true over there? Please let somebody indicate to me. Okay, thank you. God bless you. God bless you. I think we are ready now for miracle prayer. Shall we rise on our feet as the servant of the Lord comes up to pray for us? Amen. Yeah. I am ready for my miracle. My miracle is decreed from heaven. My healing, my deliverance decreed from heaven. It cannot be altered. You raise up your hand for your healing, for your miracle. You lay your hand on the, other, on the place where you have the challenge. Right now you know that there's a sure performance in your life. I said there's a sure performance in your life. It's coming. When you hear that final amen check up, it's done. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Well, thank you, Lord Jesus, because at Calvary, you paid for each all. 
by your stripes we are healed and those stripes declare the decree for healing for deliverance and for freedom and lord i pray everyone now to my right to my left at the center everywhere here and online give them the needed miracle of healing of deliverance in jesus name from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet miracle healing miracle deliverance lord let there be a sure performance in every life right now in jesus name insanity madness i command come out in jesus name blind eyes dimness of sight be healed in jesus name hearing problem dumbness be healed in jesus name any kind of swelling in your body your leg your tummy in your neck anywhere at the back i command swelling come out in jesus name cancer you are healed in jesus name hiv aids you are healed in jesus name lord i pray the ulcer be healed in jesus name lord whatever problem they have in the blood system heal them now in jesus name hypertension diabetes sugar problem you are healed in jesus name sterility barrenness be healed in jesus name every pain in your body clear out right now in jesus name problem in the heart problem in any internal part of your body you are healed in jesus name arthritis pain in the joints paralysis you are healed in jesus name lord i pray for everyone to the right to the left to the center to the back let your healing power come to every life now set them totally free and give them their needed miracle thank you lord thank you lord thank you lord in jesus name we pray it is done i have my miracle I have my healing see done and as you see then you come out you have a testimony already yeah.